We're live. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of MSATP TV. Joining us this morning is Matthew Power, the author of The Introvert's Edge, and Matthew is going to be joining us in our BBCC conference in Dewey Beach in a couple of weeks. So Matthew, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And firstly, I'm ecstatic to be here. And I have to say, I love speaking at events where, you know, accountants, people in finance kind of hang out because, you know, I think we, we tend to get very into kind of jargon based conversations a lot when we're explaining to our clients what they should do, why they should work with us. So, you know, that's really kind of how I became known because, you know, I'm known as the rapid growth guy and my books, uh, which you might be able to see in the background, uh, the introverts edge series, uh, which have sold over, uh, I think at this stage, about 65,000 copies been translated into about 15 languages. But really what I, I specialize in helping people understand is that if they want to get out of that hamster wheel of struggling to find interested prospects, trying to set themselves apart, trying to make the sale, feeling like people only care about one thing, price, which is becoming such an issue, especially in the accounting field now, where uh, you know it's a noble profession, but people keep trying to push people down on price and starting to see them as, you know, it, it's not the advice, I just want you to do the accounting to, to to you know the, the the specific IRS documents that are required, it's just getting harder and harder. So what I help people really understand is that if they differentiate, if they niche down, if they create a sales system heavily focused on story as opposed to jargon, they really can still create an amazing income and actually get to work with clients that appreciate what they do as opposed to just get them to submit the forms and submit everything late to put all that pressure on you to submit the forms. Right. So. <clears throat> We're having this conference up at uh, Dewey Beach uh, on the weekend of October the 29th, 30th, and 31st. And you'll be speaking to us on the 31st on Sunday morning. Maybe you could give us a little insight into what you'll be talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to be talking about a couple of different topics. And, you know, I'm going to be, I think I'm speaking for a full almost half day, right? So, right. you know, we're going to be breaking it into a couple of different topics. And I know the whole concept of marketing and sales is, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to say foreign, but also somewhat avoided in the accounting space. You know, there's a, um, actually, we're going to share it on social um, coming up. There's actually a, a company in the Philippines where a lot of American and Australian uh, accountants go and get their education. And actually, Jonathan, a member of your uh, society was was there. And that's, that's how I ended up speaking at your event. And he was pretty apprehensive about having uh, the rapid growth guy come to his event of accountants, because usually you focus on such, you know, how to be better at the art of accounting, you know, focus on, you know, sharpening the axe as opposed to, um, in the functional skill as opposed to what it's going to take to really get you to make more money in what you do. And what he found is that I was really able to, to baby step people through not sales and marketing, but the way it applies in the highly professional careers that, you know, like that accounting fits in. So what we're really going to focus on is at the start, I'm going to kind of unfreeze everybody that's listening to what I call the three steps to rapid growth. So we're going to look at how to differentiate in a very saturated market and how you can do it in a way that doesn't commoditize yourself. You know, I, I, I sort of talk about, you know, accounting used to be a, a very noble career. And for some people, it still is. But for a lot of others, they're finding that nobility start to to go to the fact that the people they're selling to see them almost like milk, right? I'll just go to the shelf and whatever the cheapest price is, I'll kind of pick up. And I'll, I'll help people understand why that's happening and why with a couple of simple changes to what they do, they can really transform that and go back to the people that really appreciate their advice. And we're then gonna step into niche marketing and I'm gonna talk about how niche marketing is, you know, and I, I know it's counterintuitive, but speaking to less people actually allows you to make more money and in truth, especially with the complexities of accounting now, you can't be an expert in everything. And even if you are, your customers will not believe you if you say, hey, I'm an expert in everything. So the truth is, it's a lot less stressful to specialize, but speciality also, I mean, the truth is that people expect a specialist to have a better general knowledge than everyone else. So it doesn't mean you have to fire your current clients. It doesn't mean that you have to turn down referrals that don't fit within your niche. It's just a new client acquisition strategy. And then we're going to talk about sales systemization and how sales, while a dirty word in many industries, because we get that used car salesman kind of feel to things, it actually, I mean, for me, I believe the definition of sales is to serve. 
And the whole framing around the way I look at sales, and I'm going to talk about my introverted journey and how I kind of fell into sales because I had no business teaching sales and how I found a much more relaxed step-by-step -step process that didn't have the bulldog techniques and the hard closes that I felt really uncomfortable with. So once uh -huh. we've covered that, we're then going to go deep into one of the topics that I think is most applicable um, in the finance space and the accounting space and the IT space, anything that's kind of more of a jargon fueled industry, where we kind of feel like we have to open up our fire hose of information to educate a client. And we're going to show everybody how to tell stories instead and not, you know, be a masterful storyteller and, or off the cuff, but actually have planned and prepared stories that you can tell well to get your point across. And then once we've done that and we get everybody open to telling stories and we actually will do a few story transformations and get everybody practiced at telling not hundreds of stories, but one story, which I find that if you've got one story, it will transform your entire business. So learning how to tell it well is really, you know, is really exciting thing for everyone to do. And it's really, it's going to be great. We've done this with a whole bunch of other accounting groups and I find it liberating because everyone thinks sales is so complicated. I'm like, just tell this story when you meet a customer for the first time and you'll find all of a sudden they're like, oh, I need what you're offering as opposed to how much does it cost? So once we've done that, we're then going to transition. And again, there'll be breaks in between, but we're going to transition into actually more of a fireside chat with Jonathan, um, who is a member of your society, because you know he met me you know, almost a year ago now. And his business, I mean, he was working way too many hours for a whole bunch of clients that didn't appreciate him and didn't pay him what he was worth. And we're going to kind of talk about how he actually utilized the strategies that we've been talking about to transform his business to working less hours, getting paid a lot more, even while maintaining his current client base, but then even more for new clients. So we're gonna talk about that and also what we call a concierge based service model and the, the strategy around that. Now that doesn't fit every business and a lot of people think concierge is the same as subscription and it's not. So we're gonna talk about how to structure pricing in the right way and then as well as how to leverage a solid sales process to get your current clients to pay you more. So we're gonna be covering a lot of different topics because with Jonathan, we did a total transformation and rather than everyone having to hire me to get those same outcomes, we're going to really break it down in that session so people can walk out with, okay, if I just do these things, I can really start to, you know, start to move from this exhausting job I've created myself to a little bit more of a business that pays me what I'm worth. Okay. <clears throat> now, you're going to follow the book, The Introvert's Edge, I take it. Uh, <laughs> I have a copy of that book here. Uh, and we will be offering this for sale at the meeting as well. Um, now, I've read through the book a couple of times uh, since we talked, and um, I, I find it most fascinating, and, uh, and I, I'm trying to apply some of the principles in here. So is that what you're going to be discussing as well, is, is talking about your book? Yeah, well, absolutely. So, I mean, my, my book's really designed to break down the sales process into seven steps. And for the people listening, I mean, you don't need to buy my book right now. I mean, you can go to the introvertsedge.com and it'll down, it'll give you the full seven step sales process. If you do nothing more than grab the seven step headings, and this is huge for a lot of people because what, what will happen is they grab the seven steps and they'll look at what they currently say and they try and fit it in and they realize some things don't fit. So I suggest, well, th throw those out. You shouldn't be saying that to customers. And then you'll realize that some things are out of order and then there's some gaping holes. And I suggest if you just fill in those gaps and get the order right and throw out the things you shouldn't be saying, you'll easily double your conversion when you speak to new clients. And that for a lot of people is, 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 is transformational for two reasons. One is that obviously it increases their sales, but the second thing is they realize that they're actually in a position that they can take control of their own future. And I think that's what the Introverts Edge books do. You know, The first one on sales really helps people realize that sales is a system, which means we don't, firstly, we don't have to take rejection so personally, right? Because it's a reject, if somebody says no, they're saying no to the process, not us. But then secondly, it allows us to use our analytical mind to look at the sales process and go, what thing didn't work? And all of a sudden that, I mean, that is powerful for people in the accounting field because we're such analytical thinkers anyway. So putting that analytical mind we use so well in everything else to the sales process allows you, I mean, I talk about, you know, my thesis of the book is I believe that introverts can outsell extroverts, not because of any other reason than we will hold on to a process for dear life because what gives an extrovert an advantage is they've got this gift of gab to wing things. But an introvert doesn't like to wing things. We like to hold on to a process. 
And that's what the book talks about, the power of doing that. So, I mean, people should, I mean, if you're watching this and you want to read the first chapter before you come, you know, you'll start to get an understanding of this. But yes, in the, in, in, in the presentation, we're going to be really breaking down that sales as a system and how you can really focus on a step-by-step -step nature. And then we're going to go deep into storytelling because I think for a lot of people, you know, they'd be like, oh, well, I like the idea of storytelling. Where do I start? And it makes sense to start with step one, right? And then work your way through. But with everyone that's going to be there, we're going to say, well, hang on a second. What if we just started with story? Because story has, firstly, it's the easiest thing to get right, practice and recite, but also, it's going to lead to the highest ROI. So we're going to go deep into that topic to really, you know, um, you know, transform what people are going to be saying with customers. And if if they can just change their behavior, and this is a big thing, from being asked a question and going into functional data, kind of splurting it out um, of, uh, to to going. That's a really great question. Actually, you know what? Let me give you an example and telling a story instead. They'll watch the transformation in the customer's facial expressions, their body posture, everything. And they're like, oh my gosh, this actually works. And then they'll feel comfortable. And what they'll realize is sales is not about using a bunch of tactics to close deals. Learning how to sell is about making your customer or your prospect or your current client feel comfortable with the direction that they need to go. And in the accounting field, more often than not, it's the place that they need to go for to, to benefit themselves, not for you as much. So it's about learning how to take the customers where you know they need to go, often to save their business. And that's why we're gonna go deep into storytelling. But yeah, we're gonna break down the topics of my first book, um, the, the Introvert's Edge, which focuses on a full sales process. And then we'll focus on you know some of the tactics from my new book, The Introvert's Edge to Networking, the ones that are gonna be more practically applicable, um, you know, applicable, I should say, to, to the accounting space. All right, well, thank you very much. And I appreciate you joining us here today. Um, I know you're in a hurry, so um, we'll get out of here. And again, Matthew will be speaking to us on Sunday, October the 31st at Dewey Beach at our BBCC, which is the Business Builders Connection Conference. So Matthew, we look forward to seeing you there. And um, if there's anything that we can do, let us know. I can't wait, mate. And um, I hope everyone hangs out for the Sunday and, and gets ready for a really interactive event. Sounds good. Take care. Bye. Thanks.